Hi, good afternoon. Travels with Lucky here. I'm on my way to Twin Bridges. I'm going to Madison County Fairgrounds. There is a uh, gun show there, but also they usually have some pretty interesting products. And I heard about this item called a rock pot. So I want to visit with the people a little bit and find out some more about them. But in the meantime, I thought you'd enjoy the ride down to Twin Bridges. We're in Southwest Montana, Madison County. And it's a little bit overcast, but uh, you can still see the mountains. That's better than the Canadian smoke that we had a few days ago. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this ride and uh, stick with me and let's see what we find out about this rock pot. It's gonna be pretty interesting, I know. Um, so, all right, let's go. Winston Rod Company, that's where they make those great fly fishing rods. We've had a lot of rain almost every day, so everything is greening up really nice. It's just beautiful. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on here in town, but you never know. Let's just see what happens. Okay, my original audio wasn't so great on this drive because of the car noise, so let me just uh, talk over this. This is Twin Bridges. We are on Highway 287, heading right toward Main Street of Twin Bridges, and we're going to be turning left onto Highway 41. That road will take you to Dillon, and then it will meet up with I-15, which goes north and south, and of course, a lot of people head down to Utah and down south that way, so this is the road that goes there. This nice little town. And turning the corner now and we're going to be crossing the Beaverhead River. One of the three rivers that make up the Jefferson. It's the Ruby, Big Hole, and Beaverhead River. And I'll show you a little bit more of the river here in just a bit once we get into the fairgrounds. So now on the right hand side there's a nice rest area there's actually probably one of the only bike rest areas, bike camping rest areas. Bikers can stay there, take a shower, do whatever, but it's uh, it's really nice. And then back there where you see that other water tower, that's the water tower, the original water tower for the old Montana State Orphanage. I've done a lot of videos on that. You can check my playlists and uh, watch some of those has quite a great history there. Now we are turning into the fairgrounds. I just wanted you to kind of get a feel for the 
area for the skies. This is Memorial Day weekend and um, my advice is if you're planning a camping trip to Montana, cancel it because uh, after 45 years of living in Montana, I'm pretty sure almost 90% of the Memorial Day weekends are rainy and overcast as you can see right now. I'm just lucky that it's not raining. So we're driving into the fairgrounds here and they have some really nice buildings. I'll stop and show you around a little bit. There's a few oddities in the fairgrounds which I think are interesting and I wanted to show you those. So there is a gun show here in the round pavilion. I won't actually show you a whole lot there but that's where I want to visit with the people who invented the rock pot. That's really kind of the whole point of this video because we were here earlier and my husband grabbed me and he said hey you got to check this out this rock pot and he didn't hesitate to buy one so I'm also anxious to try ours out but I wanted to get a little bit more history because the people that are selling them are the are the inventors this man Fred invented them so I think his story is really great and um, I think you'll enjoy it too so the roads here are pretty muddy I'm just driving up here a little bit to show you some of the fairground area uh, this is the bandstand or the uh, grandstand they do a lot of rodeos here and I stopped later in the video to show you the construction of that uh, uh, building there it's pretty interesting this is a, a nice fairground you can actually walk from that bike camp that I told you about it goes underneath the the highway there and you can walk all the way around and walk along the Beaverhead River and it's a, a really nice walk it's about a mile walk a lot of people uh, walk their dogs regularly so um, those are the Ruby Mountains back there and I'm still driving, so I'm just talking over this because of the car noise. Those are the Tobacco Root Mountains back there, and then, of course, Twin Bridges is just straight ahead there where the, where the light is shining. And pretty soon here I'm going to be parking, and then I'll, I'll show you just a few things about the Madison County Fairgrounds. It is a place where you can camp. Um, during rodeo season though, I'm pretty sure you won't get a spot that fills up really, really fast. Other than that, it's usually pretty quiet, but these buildings are log constructed. They were put up a long time ago and they were, um, donated by local patrons of the area and they continue to make donations in order to keep this fairgrounds up and running. It's a it's a great small town county fair. Madison County Fair takes place here in August. Definitely worth the time to come and see all of the different things going on, the 4-H events, all the kids that have raised animals. Now here's parking for the people who were, who are right, at so the I'm gun gonna show. walk over here to the river, show you the beaver head. It's flowing pretty fast. All the rivers right now are pretty dangerous in Montana because of the snow melt and we've had so much This is rain. about as full as you're gonna see it. And there's usually ducks and geese in here but not sure where they are right now. So there's a few interesting things that I noticed at this fairground and I'm, I'm right close to this one and I call it Stonehenge. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe we can find out. So, see this structure here? Those are all granite rocks. And I just think it's pretty interesting. I don't know how many people pay attention to these things, but I think it's a good idea to check out the oddity things. Okay, so you can see the the cut marks here. So, 
dedicated to Alan Hamilton. Yes, he's um, donated a lot of money here to the um, fairgrounds. It's a big ranching family. Well, that's interesting. I wonder a little bit more about the significance of that. So that was one thing. And then I also wanted to see this Memorial Hall. Madison County Fair Memorial, oh, Memorial Wall. It's built by the 4-H Club. And those are people that are supporting 4-H uh, over the years. Yeah, a lot of these people have donated a lot of money. That's interesting. You can see how green everything is. All right, well, I'm going to go over here into the gun show. I'm not going to do a lot of filming in there because I think they're not real interested in having me film in there. That's a round okay, well, I'm walking in the back door, but I have already paid earlier. I'm just going to do a quick look around here, give you an idea. Could you introduce yourself to me? You bet. Uh, first of all, what's your name? I'm Cheryl. Hey, Cheryl. Uh, Fred Nino. Uh, yeah. I'm the inventor of the rock pot. All right. Yeah, we invented this mainly because we wanted a way to be able to cook while we're traveling. And yeah. it turned out to be a way better product than I thought. Uh -huh. And let me just kind of explain to you how it works. Okay. What makes it so unique is this stone. The stone is made out of a material that really holds heat. It's basically a soapstone and alumina. And it's a natural stone, but it does so well holding heat that you can use it to actually cook with. Wow. There's a stainless steel mesh in there, so it holds it together real nice. And what you do is you heat the stone up and you can put it in a fire, which is really unique. It only takes about 20 minutes to heat it in a fire, or you can heat it at home on your burner, on your stove top. So you take that after you've heated it, and you put it down in the rock pot, and then the really cool part is you can take this other pot, fill it up with whatever you want. It could be raw chicken, roast, ribs, potatoes, whatever. Put it inside the rock pot, close that baby up, and you take that thing with you, and not wow. only will it cook that raw food, but it'll also keep it hot for about 10 to 12 wow. hours. That's amazing. It is amazing. And what's cool about it is you can make all kinds of meals in here. It's a great rice cooker. You can actually cook bread, make a cake, brownies. So it's very versatile. Wow. Yeah, thank you. And what, what makes it so efficient is this is actually a double stainless steel wall with the air vacuumed out of it. So it really is good for thermal conductivity. It never gets hot on the outside, yet it will be 600 degrees on that little stone, and it'll cook your food and keep it hot for you. Wow. Yeah. Well, you gotta tell me, how did you ever come up with this great idea? I mean, it's just incredible. I'm, I'm so impressed. I mean, my husband had to drag me over here because <laughs> he wanted to buy one so, so badly. So the, the genesis of this, the beginning, actually goes back 40 years ago. Wow. Uh, I married into a family that were way into hunting, my wife. I wasn't a hunter growing up, my family wasn't, but they were. And every year, they would bring some venison from the year before. You know, take a piece of the deer meat out of the freezer, make a stew. We'd go up to hunt, set up our campground, and every time, that meal was never hot. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So then we'd have to set up a fire, figure out a way to heat it up. And I remembered, sounds funny, but I remembered the pioneers used to take stones, oh, yeah. heat them up and put it in their food and it would right. heat it and keep it hot. And I thought, a stone, why not have the stone in a pot with another pot? And that's how it began. Wow. So I made a version of this clear back 40 years ago when I was a young man and uh, made a bunch of other money in my life, kind of put that on the shelf. Uh, during COVID, my wife told me I should get a life. 
and she said, you remember that rock pot? You should make a new version really? of rock pot. And there and, it is. Wow, that's just incredible. But technology's changed. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, I could never have made this back 40 years ago, you know, with the stainless steel and the stone. Oh, yeah, and it's beautiful. And you've thought of everything. You get the... Um, a therm the thermometer. Temp thermometer. Yeah, and that's so that if you want to heat it in a fire, if you're heating this on a stove top, it's only 30 minutes. You don't have to worry about how hot it gets. But if you're using a fire, it could be a good fire, not such a good fire. So we say, look, drop that in the, right in the coals. After 20 minutes, put the thermostat on there. As long as it's over 600 degrees, it's going to cook whatever you put in it. Wow. Yeah. That and that is... weight's consistent. That's incredible. You have a nice setup here at the at the gun show here. I hope a lot of people. Well, you're going to be busy this weekend. Yeah, we've had a great day already. Okay. Oh, that's good. Okay, I do a taste test in just a bit. Look who's behind me, Sacagawea and her dog Seaman. This is a statue at Madison County Fairgrounds, and I just love it because. Our dog travels with Lucky, you know Lucky, is uh, Newfoundland, and this is a Newfoundland, but Lucky is Newfoundland and uh, Gordon Setter. So there she is. In case you don't know the history about this area, Lewis and Clark came over this way across, uh, they came over the Tobacco Root Mountains and from the Missouri River, then they headed over this way and Sacagawea was their leader. When she got over in this area, she started to recognize what is Beaverhead Rock. And then she remembered when she was a small child the area and so she was able to lead them out and without Sacagawea they never would have found the Pacific Ocean so it, it's a pretty historical spot around here I'll show you a picture of Beaverhead Rock but anyway this is Madison County Fairgrounds and I really had a great time um, meeting Fred and his wife. Fred is the inventor of the rock pot, so I got to get home and try that out. Okay, so we're going to continue on around the fairgrounds. I think I can get out the back door, and I'm just going this way so that you can see some of the great views around here. This stadium is pretty interesting. I think it's worthy of me stopping right here and getting out and showing it to you. This is the back side. I can't really get in because it is locked, but look at the old log construction. I think you can see that through the fence. There we go. It really holds a lot of people too. Okay, so this is around the back side of the fairgrounds. You can see it's still pretty muddy around here. And uh, looks like we've got another storm coming in. You can barely see the mountains off into the distance. Hey, what did you think about that rock pot? They gave me a sample of the food that they were cooking in it all day. And so when I get home, I'm going to taste it. I'll put that on here at the end of the video. So watch and let's see how it is. I can't wait. And I'm really anxious to try ours out too. And when I do, I'll take a video of it so you can see exactly how it works. I just, I think it's an amazing thing. And what a great um, energy saving device. I mean, people back in the day were so smart. All right, so off to the right of course is the fairgrounds and this is a 4-h project here they're doing greenhouse and gardening and everything it's pretty nice there used to be a um, demolition derby track in here but they've uh, since discontinued that sorry to say it was a lot of fun and that's twin bridges off you can see the twin bridges 
um, water tower there. And we're just heading out and I'm gonna go home and taste and I can't wait to taste that because it's I'm, I'm hungry so we'll see how that works out there's twin bridges and fairground entrance we just got a new um, sign there okay I'm home in my backyard ready to try this okay I'm back at home one last thing in this video those kind people who are the inventors of rock pot gave me the me a meal that's been cooking in the rock pot Wow it's delicious. It's um, still warm. It's been 15 minutes since I came home and they've had it at their display table all day long, opening it and closing it. It cooked it and it's still warm just on that one heating of the rock. Amazing. Mmm. Delicious. Can't wait to try mine. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Travels with Bucky.